Deepika Bellapur for two years and got the uh, they got the best branch award for the state. He's also state president of IMA Karnataka two zero two one, and he's also has the hold the held the post of he's also holding the post of national joint secretary IMA headquarters in New Delhi. So I don't know how you manage all these things, sir. Do you how do you find time? <laughs> all because of the encouragement and support by people like you. <laughs> all the credit should go to my friends and well wishers like you. No, sir, you must be having bone beta. So, I would just request Dr. Venkat Chalapati, sir, to say a few words before this. Sir. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, good evening, everybody. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers. And particularly, probably a week or so back, uh, I got a surprise call from uh, Dr. Anupam Sachdev, sir, because he was the president uh, when we did the Bangalore Pedicon. So, I was very happy to accept this responsibility of chairing today's session. And uh, uh, my good friend, uh, Dr. Alok Bandari, sir, the president of uh, IAP Delhi, and uh, Dr. Mukesh Dankar, Secretary of IAP, <laughs> and my co-EB, Dr. Priya Shivanli, and uh, today's speaker, Dr. K.K. Saxena, sir, and all other uh, delegates on this virtual platform who are eager to listen to today's topic. Uh, in fact, it's a very, very basic topic. Uh, in spite of a uh, lot of advances in the imaging modalities, uh, still X-ray holds a special position. Uh, for a simple reason that it's a very simple uh, investigation modality and uh, easily available and, uh, all over the country and even every nook and corner rather I would say. And it has got advantages in detecting certain diseases and results are given very fast. So that is how and and, and off late because of the digitalization, uh, apart from the traditional X-ray, because of the digitalization modality, I think now it's even faster and uh, you can store huge uh, data in the digital format. So it, it, it clarity is good, the clearance is good, the features are coming out beautiful. So it makes the uh, retailers very easy to assess all the X-rays. So with that introduction, I think we have got a very wonderful person in Dr. KK uh, Saxena today to deliver his talk on basics on uh, chest and abdominal X-rays, sir. So it gives me immense pleasure to invite you to deliver your talk. And at the same time, I once again thank the organizers for uh, giving me this opportunity. And uh, kindly excuse me if I leave it slightly early because I've got one more uh, webinar to be attended uh, from my own parent branch, uh, IAP Bangalore. Uh, so we have one more webinar. So I'll try to uh, be stay as long as possible in this uh, platform. Uh, no, thank no, you no. so much. And uh, over to you, sir. Back to you, sir, back to you, Dr. Mukesh. Sir, good evening. Sir, good evening, sir, everybody. Dr. Sir, Anupam sir, here. Sir, welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Sorry, I got delayed. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, Dr. Venkat uh, Chalapati. Good evening, sir. How are you, sir? Sir, sir, I am absolutely fine, sir. How are you, sir? I'm good. Dr. Priya, how are you? Uh, good evening, sir. Fine, sir. Evening, Hope sir. you are doing good. good Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And Dr. Saxena, welcome. Uh, I think I won't uh, stand between you and the audience. Oh, thank uh, you. Just go thank ahead. You. And... No, sir. Thank Dr. You. Priya, thank you. Dr. Priya needs to say a few words to us before yeah. we go on to Dr. Saxena. Please, ma'am. Yeah, definitely, sir. So, uh, good evening, everyone. I think it's a great privilege for me to be on this platform of uh, ICH uh, Sir Gangaram Hospital and IAP Delhi. Uh, thanks to Dr. Anupam Sachdev, sir, uh, for giving me this opportunity and the IAP Delhi office bearers, Dr. Alok Bandari, sir, president, Dr. Mukesh Dankar, sir, secretary of IAP Delhi. It means a lot to be on uh, this platform. Thank you so much for inviting me here. And uh, I acknowledge the presence of uh, my co-EBs, Dr. Venkta Chalapati, sir, and Dr. G.P. Kaushal, sir. And uh, I don't want to come in between the science now. Uh, we are also learning back to basics with the uh, chest X-ray and abdomen X-ray. Uh, we have a great uh, teacher here, Dr. Saxena, sir. Even uh, we would like to learn from him about the basics of chest X-ray and abdomen X-ray. Once again, thank you so much for this uh, honor and opportunity. Thank you. Pleasure. So, uh, Dr. Kaushal is still between us and Dr. Saxena. <laughs> Dr. Kaushal, sir, please, can you say a few words to him? 
the audience and to uh, to us. Ah, uh, sure. Thank you, thank you, Doctor Dankar. Uh, I just joined it for, as uh, Sir said. Now it's a very basic modality, but uh, of late I have seen in residents that uh, it, it it's a must uh, sort of thing, which need to be uh, sort of refreshed many times. They do believe straight away into CT and MRI and all, but certain things are very much clear on X-rays even. So that's why I thought of the I I must listen to this lecture fully. And uh, Doctor Anfam, this is a great venture of yours. That's such a huge academic you are giving every week. We are having uh, one topic or the other. That too from the experts all over India. So thank you very much, sir. And uh, thank you. Okay. Much time, thank you, Dr. Dhankar, for giving me an opportunity. Yes, it's a great pleasure to be with this team. Thank you. Sir, all of sir, final words from you before we start this session, sir. No, no, I, I don't have anything to say except that uh, we are approaching the century mark. So please go ahead, Dr. Saxena. <laughs> sir, over to Saxena, sir, finally. Sir, go ahead, sir. Share the number. This one. Ah, yes, sir. Yeah, thank Slide. you. Thank you. Thank Slide to stop or dal do. Slide show per. Pages. Thank you everyone <laughs> for the opportunity given to me. Sir. And, uh, we'll try to finish in time. But this is a topic which is very long and uh, takes longer time. Although things are changing very fast in the radiology field. And uh, from the original radiology which used to happen around 30 40 years back now things are changing very fast and uh, everything is becoming digital and digital and everybody has got a respect of the non delivery of the radiation less delivery of the radiation to the patient so that we can become better better by reducing the doses to the patient so naturally the concept of digitization, digitalization was important. This is not changing. Slide is not changing this. Yes. So X-ray chest provides a great deal of information to of the patient and are less expensive than the other imaging and use very, very less, little amount of radiation. Often provided the information that tells us we need to do additional imaging or not. And can be hard to interpret in children because they are not stable, they are all the time mobile, they are not having a command of control of SAS Roglo, that kind of problem. So it's a very difficult situation, but we need to have a very good equipment and very good radiographer who can see the abdomen protruding out. And at that time, if the person is clicking the thing, clicking the X-ray, then it is best. These are the basics of the radiography. And uh, X-ray chest looks different in the children than the adult. And the changes with the age of the patient and the cooperation may be limited from the patient. Thymus can cause many much more confusions in that. So it changes with the age. I'll show you a few of the examples of this. At six months, the X-ray looks very good. Trachea is little curved because they are very soft and the cartilage is not that strong strong enough to keep it straight and heart looks little flattened. Sometimes you may see little air in the esophagus because of the swallowing of the air. This is the air in the esophagus. Lung feels okay. They look good. But when we take at the seven months age, 
then the then the it has become better. The lung field starts getting filled up better. So there is a difference, and you can see the heart size is getting a little reduced. That is all because of the inspiration and expiration. We should count the ribs from the anterior end, like this. This is first rib, second rib, third rib, fourth rib, like that. So if the diaphragm is at the anterior end of the sixth rib, then it is an adequate inspiration. Otherwise, we call it as an expiratory film. So this is a better inspiratory film. You can count down and then this is a sixth rib, seventh rib. So this is a better inspiratory film. Here you can see that uh, in the last image, you, you were seeing the widening of the mediastinum. That was because of the thymus. And now you see the thymus had started reducing in size. And uh, mediastinum had started looking much better than what it was looking earlier. And costophrenic angles become much better to see when the film is inspiratory. This had become very fast world. Now this is at the two years of age. You can see the differences gradually happening. Bones are getting much more stouter and ossified. Here again at the four years, the child is able to stand now. So we are able to take a better film. At these 11 years, you can predict that the patient was a female by seeing the breast shadows and softness of the thorax. This is again a erect film where you can see the fluid level in the gastric fundus. These are pulmonary vessels. This is left pulmonary vessel. This is right pulmonary vessel. I'll come to uh, explain some of the normal things. Like this is superior vena cava. From the hilar level, the right costo, right atrium is seen here. And then base is formed by the right ventricle. Base of the heart sitting over the diaphragm is made by right ventricle. And a very thin, narrow rim of around 2 to 4 mm is formed by the left ventricle. Here is the aortic knuckle then the pulmonary conus, and then the left atrial appendage. Sometimes we ask students during our examination in the viva, this is the very important thing. Arbitrarily, we divide the lung field into three zones. They are not the lobes, they are zones. From the anterior end of the second rib, above all this is upper zone, from the, up to the fourth rib, from second rib to fourth rib, this is all middle zone and the rest is lower zone. Similar way on the left side also, we divide like this. What is more important, whether one view is enough or two views are enough, I will show you the difference. That's taking this X-ray chest, there is a nothing wrong scene. You can appreciate that Markings over here are little more, little more, and the cardiac border is seen very nicely. It means there is something wrong, either anterior to the heart or posterior to the heart. But we cannot say that patient has got some problem, but patient was running temperature. So we decided to take, we decided to take a lateral film and lateral film there was a element of atelectasis in the middle lobe foreign body was aspirated which was uh, non radio opaque so we can't see on the x-ray in this case we can always guide the person to undergo a ct examination or a bronchoscopy a pediatrician can always get a guidance from us and discussion is a very important part. If we issue a report, somebody may see, somebody may not see, but 
discussing things will help a lot. Cooperation of the patient is a must, but we get a limited cooperation. And uh, this is the X-ray done just before X, uh, inspiration. And when we take an inspiratory film, just after a few seconds or minute, the X-ray just looks normal. Here we feel that there are unnecessary abnormalities and pneumonia, maybe pneumonia, but here there is nothing wrong. Heart size in the newborn can be a little more than half the width of the chest at the maximum, at the maximum width. Lateral film is often more accurate than the frontal film because of the anteroposterior location of the, of the heart. Like here, we see that heart looks a little bigger, but if we take the measurement from the inner side of the ribs, from left to right, and we divide it by the width of the heart, then it should not be more than 60%. If it is more than 60%, and pulmonary vessels are very enlarged, or there is a prominence of the pulmonary vessels and nodularity in the hilar area, then there may be some element of left to right shunt or something wrong with the heart. Like here, we when we take a when we take a expiratory film, then heart looks tubular. But when we take a inspiratory film, heart looks all right, and the thymus is seen. <clears throat> Sharing the screen up, share only. So screen show up at Allo. It has come now. Slide show up at Allo. So slide show up at Allo. Oh, yeah, not changing here. Let's go click. It is seen now. Up, Tika, sir. Up, Tika. Yeah. Similar way, we see different, different time of pictures taken of the same patient and frontal x-ray and lateral x-ray are very helpful because you see that heart is looking like more wide in the mediastinum, but here it looks like normal and trachea is not pressed. It means it is all thymus. Thymus is never going to press the trachea unless it is very, very large.
sometimes you may say the difference of overexposure and underexposure. When it is overexposed, underexposed, then the sometimes densities may not be seen that clearly. But when you see uh, properly exposed film or overexposed film, the upper part becomes very black and you may miss a lesion, but other lesions become sharper. Proper exposure will give you the best picture. Best picture in that, that a small mass lesion may be missed. Here you can see the lower lung fields are looking very black as compared to the upper part because of the emphysema. But this is the 10th rib, so diaphragm is well below that. That means that patient was having emphysema. Adequate film will always show you that you can appreciate the intervertebral spaces through the heart shadow. But total vertebra and the pedicles may not be seen clearly. Here you can see the spinous processes and that there is a carina over here which divides at the level of D5, D6. Clavicles can be seen and a good exposure and a good position will show that from the spinous process, both the medial end of the clavicle are equal on either sides. We need to go very systematically to see what we want to see in our X-ray chest. First, we see lungs, then pleural surfaces, then cardiomediastinal contours, then bones and the soft tissues, and then abdomen. Few people go different ways. They like to see soft tissue first from the periphery to center. And I prefer like this. Where to look for the apices, retrocardiac areas, right and left side and below the diaphragm. And the normal anatomy of the frontal x-ray, I started telling you a little bit of it. Again, I'll tell you on a coming x-ray. See the superior mediastinum is narrow and normal. This is the superior vena cava shadow, fine shadow. Then comes the cardiac border, which is again formed by the right atrium. Then aortic knuckle. This is a little relatively larger or adult, close to adulthood patient. Then pulmonary bay and then left atrium appendages and left ventricle. Base is formed by the, <clears throat> base is formed by the, most of the base is formed by the right atrium, right ventricle. Like this, this is again, right atrium, left, left ventricle, then this is the main pulmonary artery segment from where the left pulmonary artery and then it takes turn to the right pulmonary artery. This is again aortic knuckle and descending aorta shadow. You may see sometimes rounded things. They are sharp in outlines and these are the endon vessels running anteroposteriorly. So they are seen like this because they attenuate more of the radiation. This is trachea and this is the upper lobe bronchus and lower lobe bronchus. Lateral films are sometimes they look very horrible. Everybody feels very doubtful about them. But when you see carefully, the trachea is seen here beautifully, then divides into right and left bronchi. This is arch of the aorta where I put an AA. These are the descending pulmonary arteries. And this is main pulmonary artery segment. Then this is right main bronchus because this is looking seen like and on. 
this takes little more angle. That's why the way you say that uh, right is more continuation of the of the track here. This is right hilum. This is peri. This is the retro tracheal stripe. These are the imaginary line which divides right ventricle and left ventricle. If we draw a line from the anterior costophrenic recess to the hilum, then above is the right ventricle and below is the left ventricle. This is the inferior vena cava entering into the heart. This is again, I'm showing you the left main bronchus, which is again having an angle to the main trachea. We see a shadow and we make an image because of the, whenever there is a maximum X-ray transmission, like here, it will look blackest. Air will look a little less black, then fat will look a little more opaque, then soft tissue will be, look more opaque than the fat. This way we go at the whitest will look metal. We basically work on these seven different densities and this is all because of the differential X-ray absorption. Thymus. Thymus looks like this when you see a sample or intraoperatively. And this causes a big, big shadow over here. Sometimes it may cause a spiky appearance here, which is called as sailboat sign. Thymus is increasing the size and from birth to puberty it increases, but grows <clears throat> With the child, children growing, this becomes smaller and smaller. Whenever there is a small illness, it can shrink within hours. May increase suddenly in size, especially after the chemotherapy. So we need to be very careful whenever patients are on chemotherapy, thymus may be larger. Here, this is called as a sailboat sign. This is all thymus. This is not a pneumonia. Few of the congenital conditions I'll deal with, like tracheal stenosis, tracheomalacia, tracheal bronchus, tracheal atresia, and bronchogenic cyst. These are all different causes I'm enumerating, but I'll not be able to go in details of everyone. Tracheomalacia is softening of the trachea. It becomes very narrow, and child will give you a strider or weech, strider will be there. This is the contrast in the esophagus showing you the details. Tracheal stenosis, it can happen like this or like this. These are the areas where the cartilage has not grown well and maybe a congenital stenosis. Like here, this black shadow you see carefully is all air in the trachea and here is a narrowing again. Sometimes the bronchus may come out of the trachea and supplying the right upper lobe. Like this, when we see a CT cut, this is seen beautifully well. This is the area where the carina is, main bronchus of the right side, main bronchus of the left side. But a cut above this is showing you the extra bronchus. And then the, and the, this patient was investigated further because people were not believing and then the bronchography was done. For the student, this may be a new thing to see that bronchography. This is a time when the, we used to do bronchography around 30, 40 years back. Bronchial atresia is a very, very rare thing and it happens sometime. Like here, you see 
there is no bronchus coming out and the lung becomes not working. This is happening mostly in the cystic adenomatized malformations, congenital cystic adenomatized malformation. This is bronchogenic cyst. It has got a very sharp outline and broad base toward the mediastinum. So this will always carry a sharp outline, a smooth outline because it is full, full, full of the fluid and uh, on CT, you, you see the density like fluid. These are the bronchogenic cysts. They are filled up with the fluid. Here you see another example of complicated bronchogenic cyst where the cyst has ruptured and communicated with the bronchus. Pulmonary underdevelopment was classified by the Schneider and Schwabe, and they give agenesis, then aplasia, then hypoplasia. So lung agenesis will be totally absent lung, like here. Absent lung and whole of the mediastinum is shifted to the right side, and uh, heart is also shifted to the right side, and there is no bronchus of the right side. Here you see the whole of the heart is shifted little backside and the emphysema of the right left lung, compensatory emphysema of the left lung is taking over and shift of the mediastinum is to the right. If we do in such cases bronchography, you will see only one bronchus coming out of the trachea and if we do pulmonary angiography, CT guided or DSA, then you will see a different picture. Heart and having only one pulmonary artery. Pulmonary hypoplasia, there are very rare cases. Like here, very small heart, small lung. And here the intercostal spaces will be seen much narrower as compared to the right side. And here this is not an infection. This is all because of the pulmonary vessel. They are prominent and heart had shifted to the left. So they are seen little more larger and prominent. Cystic adenomatoid malformation mostly happens on the left retrocardic area, but here in this case, the, this is happening in the right lower lung because of the supply from the <clears throat> systemic like aorta. Their supply is from the systemic arteries like from the aorta or coming from the below the diaphragm or phrenic artery. There are different types of this. I will not go into much detail because of the constraint of the time. Congenital lower emphysema looks like this. The horizontal fissure will reach here and the whole upper lobe will be occupied by a large cystic area full of air because of the emphysematous changes in the... Like here also in the left lung, the whole lung becomes emphysematous. Right lung is normal on CT, you can see. Pulmonary sequestration is another, another problem found in the pediatric age group, which is nowadays even diagnosed when the in utero fetus is there and the ultrasound can tell you And in a patient asymptomatic, but you find all this irregular opacities in the retrocardiac area, then, and this has got a systemic supply. It is coming from the abdominal aorta. So this is pulmonary sequestration. This is another condition in which you see 
radio opacity is separate from the cardiac border and they are abutting the heart, but they are not touching the heart. They are located posterior to the heart. So they are again having few cystic areas and this is because of the pulmonary sequestration. Toph is of alag, different, different variety. The atresia without a fistula, like here. Then atresia proximal with a proximal fistula. Then uh, atresia with a distal fistula. And then communicating with the both the things. And then fistula only connected with the esophagus like H type. Here is a picture in which if you pass a feeding tube, it will keep on getting curved up. This indicates that this was a total blind fistula. And uh, if you give barium or gastrographin, mostly nowadays gastrographin is given. So if we find a very thin narrow beam coming out of the contrast of the esophagus, then it is edge type fistula. Duplication cysts are sometimes seen on chest and on the seat on the X-ray chest in a lobulated manner. On sometimes on the right side, sometimes in the upper part of the mediastinum, sometimes in the lower part of the mediastinum also. This is a hernia, diaphragmatic hernia. When you see the contour of the diaphragm is seen smooth on the right side, but it is not seen and discontinuous. And you can see the air, bowel distended, bowel air loops inside the chest against the heart. Then this is hernia. This is after. These are very long thing now. Uh, I don't think time will time will permit me to do and show you all this. So I'm skipping this. From here, I'll switch over to the little bit of uh, another abdomen. Ashish, I need your help. I want to share the next. I hope that I am audible there and people are watching it. This I had already covered that uh, when a fetus or a newborn baby is given X-ray radiation, then he is going to accumulate the radiation throughout his life from different sources. So the patient is more prone to develop problems in the later life as compared to a person who is already 40 years, because these uh, radiation has got an added effect in the body. Uh, all radiation carry a lot of problem. Gonads are more sensitive, breast are then bone are less sensitive. There is a concept of LARP, as low as reasonably possible radiation should be given. We should try to do only those X-rays or only those imaging which are must for the patient. So clinician has to decide which appropriate study has to be done. There are different technical issues with the pediatric imaging like instruct instructional compliance. If we are seeing you stop your breath, but baby will never stop that. And child should be stabilized by the parents, not by the radiographer. This is an occasional fight. 
because they if we ask the nurses to hold the baby they are working their daily so they will keep on increasing their doses so attendance or the patient parents should be called in normal pediatric abdomen x-rays are we should watch at the gas distribution there are pocket of gas scattered in several areas of the abdomen there is a gas in the small bowel colon and rectum bubble dilatation i'll tell you about this and the different kind of air fluid levels so when we see uh, x-ray abdomen we need to see that this is a erect film and this is a supine film because there is a fluid level here in the stomach and these are the diaphragm the right diaphragm left diaphragm then spleen spleen shadow is seen like this there is a fat line black line then you see kidney kidney shadow is seen beautifully well another shadow of the kidney like seen here and when the supine film is taken you see the gastric rugal folds mucosal folds of the stomach then swash shadows are seen much better on a supine film as compared to the standing film although they are seen in the standing film as well this is shadow of the fecal matter it will be punctate radio opacities air opacities and this is the ascending colon a little bit of transverse colon and descending colon these black lines are the fat fat lines in between the muscle and the peritoneum whenever there is splenomegaly it will cast a black line over here and a soft opacity and the thing will look displaced like colon is displaced so splenic flexure is not there in the left upper quadrant and shifted foreign body in the abdomen yes if it is a radiopaque foreign body this is a shadow of the stomach and we see that uh, coin is lying there in the antral region of the stomach <clears throat> but by the time another day x-ray taken this becomes and on and the small wall loops are dilated because of the irritation or ileus loops are dilated and it has traveled down indications for the gi imaging are the acute abdomen obstruction baby is having distended abdomen or inflammatory or infective or abdominal masses you see the clinician feeling a hard mass then the imaging is required intestinal obstruction may we need to do a careful study about the esophageal atresia congenital esophageal stenosis extrinsic compression vascular rings or gut duplication cyst and neoplasm in stomach we need to see the gastric atresia antral valve duplication cyst hypertrophic pyloric stenosis duodenum duodenal atresia duodenal valve extrinsic compression from the annular pancreas a small bowel we should look for the atresia hernia valvulus enterocolitis necro necrotizing enterocolitis hashprung disease is mostly found basically this is the choice of investigation barium anema or gastrogaphen anema esophageal obstruction has got different different kind of so many things to do and see i had already explained this like here you are seeing the tube is curved up it will not go into the stomach and will come back again esophageal atresia if we see a tube coming out till here but not going down and the gasless abdomen this indicate that the upper end is connected to the trachea but lower end is blind lower end of the esophagus is blind then if we put in a tube and take a x-ray 
then tube is getting limited there. But air is there in the bowel loops and stomach that indicates that the trachea and the lower part of the atritic esophagus is connected to the trachea. This is the H-type fistula. I'm again showing you. This is done best when the tube is there and we inject contrast in the lateral position. Otherwise, sometimes we may miss this. Gastrogabin should be used. Never use a barium nowadays. Then we see a very large size of the stomach. Most probably possibility of duodenal atresia or pyloric atresia. This is a picture where you see the filling defects in the stomach and the contrast passing through that. These are the bezoars. Sometimes trichobezoar, sometimes phytobezoar. This happens mostly in the some psychological disorders of the children. Hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, this is best diagnosed nowadays on the ultrasound, but X-ray carries some value. When you see the incisura angularis, this is contrast filled stomach, and then you see incisura angularis and then a elongated pyloric canal, which is more than 16 mm. Then we see it to be a pyloric stenosis. In the old days, we used to say it pyloric stenosis. Like here, it's quite long. Then this is called as a tram like sign or caterpillar sign. But on ultrasound, we see a uh, target sign as well as cervix sign. This is a false cervix kind of thing. Uh, this is cervix sign. Duodenal obstruction, you can see on a plain film that there are two dilated oval structures full of gases. One is on the right side, another is occupying almost whole of the abdomen. And this indicates that uh, either second part or third part of the duodenum has got obstruction. This is a normal small bowel and a large bowel gas pattern. A small bowel will always occupy the central part of the abdomen and large bowel will occupy the peripheral like a mala on the photographs. Here if you see, very careful see that there is a lucency here all around. Although few of the bowel loops are showing gases, but you see gas here limiting gas and around. This is called as football sign. Whole of the peritoneum is full of air. And uh, again, I am showing you another x-ray for this, that uh, whole of the football-like picture is there. And then few of the vowel loops are full of gases. There is a definite perforation. When such kind of large amount of per gas is there in the peritoneum, most of the time it is because of the large vowel problem. And uh, in such cases, if somebody is not agreeing or is in doubt, we can always take, take a cross lateral film. So back, back of the patient is here. This is anterior abdominal wall. And we take cross bed from the right side to the left side. We take a film. This is the liver shadow gas here. Again, a small bowel loops are there. Large bowel loops are there. Air fluid levels you see in them but there is free air all around. This is pneumoperitoneum. Then this, we, if we see the central collection of the all the bowel loops and periphery is having soft opacity. This is because of the fluid in the abdomen, ascites. This is when you see multiple air fluid levels, the small bowel loops are dilated and large bowel is seen here, ostra. Ostral pattern you see, a little bit of fecal matter or muconium, whatever it is, is seen till here in the descending colon and in the sigmoid area. 
then it is some something is going on with the ileus or patient has got some irritation going on inside and this may be all due to infective etiology this is when multiple fluid levels are seen bowel loops are dilated for more than 1.5 cm in the width if we calculate width and measure it like this then it is and you are not seeing any air in the large bowel in the peripheral part. This is a mechanical obstruction and this patient has to undergo surgery. Sometimes we should see every corner of the film. When we see like here, a little amount of air, this is bowel loop having inguinal hernia and that, that is the stuck hernia. In case of jejunal stenosis, proximal bowel loops will be dilated grossly and distal loop will be carrying little, little amount of air and they will not be dilated. This is jejunal stenosis. And if we give a contrast on this kind of cases, you see only dilated duodenomycin and duodenojejunal junction and little amount passed here into the dilated bowel. After that, hardly any passage. These are the patient who has to undergo surgery. These are, they look like uh, dilated large bowel. But to uh, compare and to be very clear, anima should be given. Anima will show you a collapsed large bowel. And then we are sure that uh, bowel is having gas tube is there and the stomach which, which is almost collapsed because of the nasogastric tube. So something is wrong in the distal bowel because here you can see up to terminal ileum. After that, nothing goes. Midget volvulus is a problem in the neonate and it happens malnutrition and midget volvulus. Gastric image can be seen by air and after that hardly any air going in cases of gastric volvulus. This is malnutrition where we had given contrast via nasogastric tube and then it comes like this. This is fundus of the stomach, lesser curvature, greater curvature than pyloric canal, duodenal bulb, and then C loop of the duodenum comes up to the right pedicle of the vertebral body of the L2. After that, it takes turn to the right side. Usually, what happens is the jejunum occupies the left hemi-abdomen. So, this is a malrotation or kisko kind of pattern of the duodenum. And if we do a Doppler, we will see a concentric ring of the colors because of the malnutrition, SMA, SMB, reverse ratio, reverse clockwise rotation. And on a CT, you will see same appearance, target sign sort of thing. Muconium ileus is a very common problem in the clinical presentation. Patient will present with the bilious vomiting and failure to pass meconium. Here you see meconium in the large bowel. It transfers colon and then large meconium is lying there and here. Another example of meconium ileus. Meconium large plug is there. Omphalo seal. This is seen in the ultrasound in fetus. These are the ultrasound pictures of the ascariasis. Sometimes you can see with the high resolution ultrasounds. 
much print disease, you will find all the bowel loops are dilated with more dilated large bowel loops and gasless rectal area. Gasless rectal area. When we do a uh, barium enema or gastrocaffeine enema, there is a tight narrowing and sudden change in the caliber of the upper part of the rectum or rectosigmoid area. This is due to high spring disease. Intersusception sometime on a plain x-ray can be picked up by a round oval soft opacity outlined with the gas and proximal bowel loop will show you air fluid levels. This is best seen on ultrasound. Nowadays, even reductions are done under the guidance of ultrasound. Previously, we used to do barium reduction. These are the target signs seen on ultrasound image of this area of where the intersusception is happening. This is the head of the intersusception and the, this is the distal part of the bowel which is going inside telescope. Appendicitis, you will see all the proximal bowel loops are dilated till the right leg fossa and sometimes you may see a appendicolith inside the end of the appendix which is seen here also in the dilated appendix with edema of the walls surrounding edema and mesentery also having inflammation colonic obstruction some this is a basically a arm anorectal malformation where the rectum is dilated and the contrast is given through the colostomy and you see the communication of the blind ending rectum with the posterior urethra going into the bladder as well as in, into the urethra and urinary bladder. Necrotizing endocolitis nowadays very rarely seen but it is still seen and you will see the gas in the biliary tract common by duct and gas in the wall of the bowel. These are the gases in the ball of the bowel. These are the signs of the necrotizing entocolitis. Rounded, rounded opacities are seen in the wall of the bowel. Mikkel's diverticulum is a rare condition, but it is found in the maybe one in uh, 10,000. And uh, this is a little proximal to the appendicular or ileocecal junction, almost six to eight inches proximal in the terminal ileum. And whenever this is there, it causes repeated symptoms of infection, repeated symptoms of the obstruction and pain. And these are diagnosed with contrast studies. These are the Michael diverticulum sometimes seen like this. Worm infestation here in the large cities, worm infestation is a rare occasion, but if you go to the village side, a lot of them, you can see the ring-like air lucencies everywhere in the abdomen. And there is an infestation of the worms inside. Sometime you can diagnose on a plain film. If you are seeing a irregular dense calcification in the pelvic area, then majority of times it is dermoid. If you see both kidneys are placed along the, because of the long axis of the kidneys are always along with the swatch shadows. But if you see the long axis of the kidney parallel to the spine and they are having a round border under the lower poles, then it is possibility that these are the horseshoe kidney and they are more dangerous for the impact 
or to the injury because they get easily fractured by the while the child is playing. Stegon calculus, they are seen very rarely in the childhood, but they are seen like this. Anybody? This is a round opacity, which is because of the umbilical hernia. This is all bowel loops lying outside of the abdomen, gastrocesis. Another picture indicating all the transverse colon in the cardiac shadow area due to a large margagnian hernia. I hope time is enough. Am I permitted time? Anupam, sir. Sir, you may take another 10 minutes or so. Yeah. Thank you, sir. This is the picture of uh, same patient which I was showing you like hernia. If you take a little film, the Morgagnian hernia is confirmed here. That this is large bowel going up. This is again, you are seeing that rice tube is lying here. Patient has got multiple air fluid levels. A small bowel loops are dilated, but they are dilated mostly in the proximal third. And mid and distal part is of lower abdomen is showing little, little air fluid levels. This is long standing obstruction. Patient needs surgery, definitely. Same patient, when taken a supine film, they look like this. Dilated bowel loops, even valvuli coniventis, you can see here and there. On CT of the same patient showing edema of the walls. This edema you may sometimes miss on the plain X-ray, but seen better on the CT. Here you can see another x-ray where there is a lot of free air under the domes of diaphragm. These are the diaphragm. This is right diaphragm, that is left diaphragm. Then atelectasis is seen in the left lower lung. And you see the surface of the liver here. This is the upper part of the surface of the liver, right lobe. So this is all perforation. And you can see the gas coming here in the peritoneum and close to the muscle layer also. So there has to be some infective etiology of long standing. This is not a day perforation of a day or two. This is a long time perforation and the patient reached to the casualty or to the hospital late. Another x-ray where you can see Contrast laden large bowel post CT because of the contrast in the large bowel and the dilated small bowel. There is an opacity in the right iliac fossa area. Possibility of a appendicular problem is more. Another baby with multiple air fluid levels, but proximal bowel is again dilated and distal bowels are collapsed and show little, little air fluid levels suggestive of possible partial atresia of the jejunal or proximal ileum. Here again, the same story, same baby. You can see soft opacity 
collection of the appendicular lump. A coin reaching up to the rectal area. Almost whole bowel has collapsed, so it may pass out in a day or two. This is over distended abdomen with central collection of the bowel loops. Again, depicting that uh, there is a ascites in the abdomen, free fluid in the abdomen. Cause we need to ascertain what is the cause. Another x ray showing a dilated large bowel. These are large bowel loops. Hostra is coming here and here. And this is sigmoid colon. So this is valvulus of the sigmoid colon. When you see a coffee bean sign, this is like a bean of the coffee, and then this is the hilum of the bean. So this is coffee bean sign. And when we do a barium or a contrast study per rectum, it stops completely at the rectosigmoid junction. It is not going further. If we inject more, it goes into the dilated sigmoid colon. So this is a confirmatory sign. Patient has to undergo a surgery. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Saxena, for a wonderful overview of uh, I know the time was less because it's a huge subject. Perhaps one day we can do it, split it up and do only chest X-ray and uh, the yes. next lecture yes. can only be on uh, abdominal uh, this thing. Uh, uh, you, thank you. Thank you. Right, Thank you very Sorry. Please go ahead, sir. No, no, you are right, sir. You are telling right things. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, any comments from Dr. Priya Shivali? Dr. Shivali? Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, yes yeah. I'm here. Yeah. Un unmute yourself. And... Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I think, uh, sir, uh, I mean, definitely time was a constraint, but uh, sir did cover a lot in chest x-rays, including the congenital anomalies, uh, but the infections and other diseases couldn't be uh, covered, I think, because of the time. And even in the abdomen, covered everything, including the esophageal atresia, Meckel's diverticulum, pneumoperitoneum, everything. I think from the basics, it's uh, definitely a great learning for the postgraduates and even for all of us. Uh, I mean, learning from the basics, it's, uh, it's always adds value to our practice also. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Saxena, sir for uh, bringing out all your uh, uh, treasured uh, x-rays uh, from your uh, uh, collections. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Dhanka. Yes. Sir, so it was pleasure uh, to hear Saxena, sir, and too elaborate for me to be really <laughs> understanding it all. But I really thank, sir, at least I could understand some part of it. Uh, Dr. Lohapandari, would you like to make any comments? No, sir. Sir, Saxena, sir, ke itne elaborate or talk ke baad aur priya ji ki itni baat chit ke baad bas main yahi kehna chahunga ki dr priya has been very active bangalore mein pichle main 10 saal mein dekh raha hu ki she has risen like anything and her activity mein she is there in that organizing committee she has got exceptional organizational skills and iap is fortunate to have her in our folds so we will look her in many thank important thank roles thank you so in much for your also. kind words sir thank you thank you Right, uh, right. Can I, can I, in a, in a uh, lighter vein, can I say something? Bilkul, sir, aap to... Dr. Priya, with your permission and apologies to you, actually Bangalore is famous for its bakeries and cakes, which rise to the occasion, and so is Priya. <laughs> thank, you, thank you sir thank you very much thank you thank you so much for the opportunities thank you thank you sir thank, thank you, you sir thank you sir. welcome thank you so much good night sir good night good night good night, good night. Good night. Good night. Thank, thank you very much for everyone and i'm very thankful to mukesh dankar and pom sachdeva alok bandari and everyone for the patience listening <laughs> sir 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 Sir, uh, we also have Dr. Lallan Bharti and Dr. Puneet Sharma. 
अच्छे से कवर किया और सर के साथ में फिर दोबारा से कभी मुझे लगता है पीरियटिक रेडियोलॉजी पे दोबारा से एक बार सुनने का मौका मिलेगा कराना पड़ेगा सर इसको पीस कराना पड़ेगा थैंक यू वेरी मच वील नीड योर एक्सपर्टाइज वेरी सुन सर थैंक यू डॉक्टर भंडारी एंड थैंक यू ललन डॉक्टर ललन आई एम वेरी ग्रेटफुल थैंक यू सर थैंक यू वेरी मच एवरीबडी एंड गुड नाइट एंड